by the year 2025, the world's going to have 175 zettabytes of data. That's one zettabyte is a trillion gigabytes. So you might be like, what the hell does that mean? Just think about your phone. Your phone might have, I don't know, 100 gigabytes maybe, right? And so one zettabyte is a trillion gigabytes. So in other words, it's a lot of data. That's all you need to know. <clears throat> now, in today's lesson, we're going to talk about the key differences of how to manage and store that data with three important topics. Number one, a database. Number two, a data warehouse. Number three, a data lake, right? And so we're going to talk about differences between all of them, the pros and cons, give you a few examples of which companies use which one. And we're also going to give you three tips to avoid common pitfalls at the end of the video, right? Because again, a lot of the things you need to learn is what not to do, because if you mess up or choose the wrong kind of database or data storage, then it can actually be very costly to the business. So stick around and we'll give you three tips on how to avoid common errors. But first, with this iPad here, I'm going to write or draw and illustrate what each of these are. Data warehouse, database, data lake. So let's jump right in. First one, <clears throat> let's talk about a data lake. Because typically, the first place that data lands, let's see if this works, is going to be a data lake. Let's see here. All right, we have a data lake here. And the best way to think about a data lake is I want you to think about your drawer, right? It could be your sock drawer because anything can go in a data lake, right? It can be socks, it can be underwear, it can be gloves, it can be hats, right? And the point of a data lake really is just a file system where we can drop in a CSV file. We can drop in a JPEG, right? We can drop in a PNG file, a movie, a video, right? Whatever, it doesn't matter. So <clears throat> think of this as like, hey, before you organize anything, let's just get it in a place so that we have it stored so that we can always go back to it. Data Lake, the best analogy I can give you is a drawer. Now, let's go into a database. What's the difference between a data lake and a database? I'll give you an analogy for a database, which is, in my opinion, the best one I can think of is a library. The reason I'm saying this is because our next topic is going to be a data warehouse. And so the reason I want you to think of a database as a library is because when you go to a library, you basically take one book off the shelf at a time. I get it. Technically, you can go and, and take out 10 books, right? But for this case, assume you can only take one book at a time. And what this means or the, the word I want you to think of when you think about one book at a time is transactional, okay? So transactional, meaning if you go and you take one back at a time, there are certain cases in tech where you only want to retrieve one little row of data, right? You're not trying to do, trying to analyze a thousand rows of data. You're just trying to do one at a time. So a library is the best analogy I can think of in this situation. Which brings me to the third case, which is a data warehouse. That is where you actually want to an analyze a bunch of rows at a time. And so the example I give here is a grocery store, right? So if you think about a grocery store, you go into the supermarket and you go into one section or one aisle, right? And you get, you know, different sections. So you have fruits here, you have vegetables here. Right, you have, you know, uh, bread here, and what's also important is that all of these are next to each other for a reason, right? They give, they put the fruits and the vegetables next to each other for a reason, and <clears throat> the best analogy here is because when you go to a supermarket, imagine you only want to grab fruits and vegetables. Well, if you go to one section and grab fruits, and they have to go all the way to the other side of the supermarket just to grab vegetables. It's not it's not that efficient, right? So 
you know, that's why they organize it the way they do. Same thing with the data warehouse. You might come in and you might want to just analyze two columns of data for, you know, uh, for the last two years of data. The data warehouse will most likely be organized in a way where that operation can happen very efficiently. The same way a, a, a grocery store puts the vegetables near the um, near the vegetables. And this is called a more analytical table, right? So it's transaction versus analytical. And we will also use the data in the data lake to build that stuff in the data warehouse, right? And so before I give you the three tips as to how to avoid common mistakes, let me just give you more examples, real world examples, so you can wrap your head around where each of these are used in real life. So for example, the if you guys ever use a company called Dropbox, right? Dropbox is the perfect example of a data lake. It kind of is a data lake, I can, that's a whole different topic, whole different video, but a Dropbox, right? You can you can put any file in there. You can put a, a Word doc, a PDF, a CSV, a movie, a video, right? And at the end of the day, all you're doing is you're just storing data, right? And so Dropbox has made a living off of just creating that service for companies to then transfer files from directly from their data lake. Now, by the way, most companies use a data lake of some sort, but Dropbox is the most famous because it's consumer facing. But if we look into a database, Amex is the perfect example of a database where what they're doing when you, for example, swipe your Amex card at a restaurant and Amex is basically having to verify that the, I don't know, the $1,000 transaction is real, right? Let's say they think it's fraud for some reason, they might take that transaction and send it to you via text message. It's like, hey, is this real? Hey, is this real? And so what they're doing there is just pulling one row of data, right? And they're saying like, hey, if, you know, Chris spent, you know, think of these as different columns. If Chris spent $1,000 on January 1st, 2025, you know, let's let's return that value via text to him. And so I know you might be wondering, well, why can't they just do that from a data lake or from a data warehouse? Well, the reality is, and again, without getting too technical, it's going to be harder for the code or the tech to find that one row from a wrong structure. So it will be faster basically to get it from a database than it will from a data lake or a data warehouse, right? And so that stuff matters because you think about something like fraud, right? We want to get alerted as quickly as possible. So with that said, that brings me to the third topic, a data warehouse. So in what cases will we need to, you know, analyze a lot of rows at one time? Well, I'll give you one where I used to work at, which is Amazon. Amazon was very, very big on data, very big on like, hey, we need to analyze 10 years worth of data, right? And they had a very simple table called fact daily transactions. And their whole goal with that table was to analyze historical data. Or another way to think of this is columnar data, right? So columns of the data. And so if their table was, let's just say we had a date column, right? You could just th think about the table as an Excel sheet, right? Date column, the user ID column, and then sales, right? And this was the year 2025 and 2024 and 2023, et cetera. But of course we had, you know, every day worth of days in that year, right? If we wanted to sum up everything from the, every sale from the last 10 years, which we did very, very often, we would have to sum up this entire row here, right? So because of that, again, without getting too 
in the weeds in the tech part, doing this, summing cr across a whole column, right, just like this, is a lot faster in a data warehouse than it is in a database or a data lake, right? And so that brings me to the third part, three tips to avoid the most common mistakes. Tip number one, and I know this sounds very, very simple, is plan and peer reviewed. Now, I cannot tell you how many times we've had some of our ex-clients tell us like, oh, I got a bad peer review from my manager because this, that, that, and this. And when I analyzed the mistakes they did over the last quarter or two, it was very, very obvious to me that they just didn't ask for help from their coworkers, right? And I'm like, hey, like, how did this project go? And he's like, oh, it was good. I spun up a data warehouse and I did this, that, and this, and that. And I'm like, before you spun up the data warehouse, did you put this on a document? And did you get one of your senior engineers, coworkers, to review that document? Nine out of 10 times, they're like, no, no, I, I did it. And then I asked them to review it. And I'm like, that's a mistake. Because if you spun it up first, you probably already wasted a lot of money and more importantly, time. So just plan and get it peer reviewed and just learn from other people. Now, Tip number two, this one is important. Optimize for the use case. And I'm actually going to cheat a little bit and give tip number three at the same time, which is think long term. So why am I grouping these two together? So if you don't understand the use case, you're just going to think that any of these you know, data like database, data warehouse fits. But if you understand, for example, let's stick with this Amex example. If you understand that Amex, what we're trying to do is build a fraud detection model. If you understand that a, you know, somebody spelling, send, uh, spending a thousand bucks at 2 a.m. should get flagged, you understand that this is one row of data, right? And Obviously, now you know it, but in the beginning, you might not have been aware of that. So you have to understand the use case because once you understand the use case, you can then deduce that this needs a database, right? And so optimize for the use case, not, not, repeat, not the cost, right? Not the cost. Yeah, I'll see a lot of people say, well, our data lake is cheaper or a, you know, um, a data warehouse is, is fancier or it's faster to spin up, right? It doesn't matter. Ask, optimize for the use case. Now, with that in mind, the reason I put tip number three, which is think long-term here, is because that use case might not be so clear until a year from now. So for example, you might be thinking, well, if I want to pull one row of data, you know, I, I can, you know, do that in a data warehouse. So here's the thing. If you think long term, you might be right and you might be wrong. So with one row of data, we might be able to pull that on a database from a database and from a data warehouse if, if both of them have let's say a thousand rows in total, right? Because you might have a thousand rows in your database and you might run a test and pull in one row of data. Oh, they both take like, you know, one second. Like it's fine. We can use either one. Sure. If you think long-term, which is tip number three, and now all of a sudden you have a million rows of data, well, guess what? The data warehouse is not going to be faster than the database. Good luck in your journey and let me know if you need any help. Bye.